Welcome, everybody. It's Thursday night. We're glad to be back with you into your living room, into your home, wherever you might be taking time to study the Word of God with me. I'm Brother Kim, uh, and this is our discipleship group. Uh, we've been studying the book of Jonah for the last uh, several weeks, and uh, tonight we're going to hopefully wrap up Jonah. Uh, it's been a great study, and we've talked about several things. So before we get going, let's have a word of prayer and ask God to bless us. Father, thank you for the privilege you give us to be here tonight. I ask that you bless each and every family that's gathered around their television and around their phone, whatever they may be doing. I pray that you'd bless the Word of God tonight. Father, there are many people that are hurting tonight. I pray for those many, many people. I pray your will be done. I pray you'd bless, take care of us, guide us, and lead us. We love you very much. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Again, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us. We're in the book of Jonah, uh, and we're at the latter uh, end of the book. We're going to talk about, first of all, chapter 1, we talked about the rebellion of Jonah, how that God had told him to go to Nineveh and preach against that great city and speak the Word of God. Well, he went just the opposite direction, and when he went just the opposite direction, God had everything ready. He just kept going down and down and down and down until finally we find him at the bottom of the ocean in the, in the belly of a whale or the belly of a great fish. And we find that in chapter 2, we find that he called out to God in repentance. And uh, uh, he begged the Lord to change him, to help him, to get out of there. Lord, I'm in the belly of hell, he cried. And he began to pray, and, and God began to see his heart turning. And then the Lord, uh, that great fish vomited him up on the beach uh, there, and he ran across that great city of Nineveh that uh, is a very large city. And uh, we find in chapter 3, revival broke out. Revival, a real move of God. It's what we would call a, a crusade today when hundreds and thousands of people would come to know Christ and would be saved and their lives would be changed. Now, I wrote this down in my Bible several years ago, and I want you to listen to it. It talks about revival, true revival draws many more people to be aware of God's sovereignty and of a deeper desire uh, for God's presence in their life. It leads many, many more people to worship Him in spirit and in truth. True revival results in many more people who could join every tribe, nation, and throne uh, around the throne of God, uh, the Bible says in the book of Revelation. Though one day, we're going to find many people around the throne that was here uh, in the city of Nineveh because of their repentance. And we know that in chapter 3, they repented. We find chapter 1, he was running ahead of God. Chapter 2, he ran to God. Chapter 3, he ran for God. In chapter 4, he's going to run ahead of God. He doesn't know what God's going to do. And so Jonah's going to run ahead of God. We're going to start in chapter 3, verse 10. We're going to end the, uh, the last t session. And we're going to look at verse number 10. The Bible says, And God saw their works. He's talking about the people of Nineveh. He saw those folks all the way from the king to all the peasants that was in that, in that great city. And we find that God saw their works, and they turned from their evil way. They truly repented of their sins. God had found them. And remember, these folks were Gentiles. They weren't Jews. They were Gentiles. I think that's part of what... Uh, 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 Jonah's problem was as that they were Gentiles, and Gentiles just didn't fit for him. And he's kind of like Peter it was in the New Testament. But the Bible says God saw their works, they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil. What it was is God didn't do what God said he would do. He even was even greater in his forgiveness for those folks that had transgressed and sinned against him. And the Bible says that he said he would do to them, he was going to destroy the city. That was the, that was the, the decree, that was the cry that God said in 40 days, in 40 days, Nineveh will be overthrown. Nineveh, judgment's coming to Nineveh, and God didn't do it. And so that's a great thing. Let's look in chapter 4 and verse number 1. And we find that Jonah has become such a self-centered, uh, self-righteous, and uh, uh, selfish man uh, as we come to chapter 4. And the Bible says this, after a great move of God, after a mighty filling of the Holy Spirit, as he preached and proclaimed, he, he was a man on a mission. He was a man that had turned his life around and truly had repented. And he preached the Word of God. He preached the message of God, and God blessed it. And then chapter 4, verse 1 says, But it 
displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. He was angry at God because God did what Jonah knew God would do. He would heal their land. He would bring them back to a relationship. He would bring them in relationship and to a relationship with God the Father. And so we find this selfish, self-centered, self-seeking man that was now mad at God. Now think about that. How, how, how redundant is that for us to get mad at God? Have you ever been mad at God? Have you ever, have you ever been upset with God? Have you ever been to the point that you say, God, what are you doing? Well, I have. I've, I've worried that myself, and that's when selfishness, self-centeredness, uh, uh, self-assertiveness, that's when self gets in the way. Uh, you know, when we think about this, we find that he truly has shown us how that many of our relationships are with God. And what I mean by that is we get excited uh, we, we're, we're in the doldrums with, with God, then we get uh, uh, renewed, revival kicks in, and we, we're excited, we just can't believe we've ever been that away, and then all of a sudden we're back to where we were at square one. And so it's got kind of a never-ending cycle. And like the children of Israel, for, the, for those many, many years that got right with God, they got left with God, they got out of it with God, and then they finally come back to God. And we find that all those times, that we waste so many years. Can you imagine walking around in an 11-mile circle for 40 years? And the promised land just across the, the way, the promised land is right next to us. We're, we're there. You see, so many of us are going to miss things just by about that much. Let's don't miss it. Let's don't be like Jonah. Let's don't be self-centered. Let's don't be selfish. Let's allow God to do what God wants to do. The Bible said it, it, it displeased Jonah. It displeased Jonah that they got right with God, the Ninevites. The Ninevites trusted the Word of God. The Ninevites trusted the God of God. The Ninevites gave the God of God their hearts and their lives and gave them everything. And you know what? Jonah got mad. Jonah got mad. Verse 2, look what the Scripture says. And he prayed. Well, he did the right thing. He prayed to the Lord. And he said, I pray you, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet still in my country? When, when I was back over there in chapter 1, uh, when God told him uh, 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 to, to go to Nineveh, and he got up and he went to Tarshish, when he got up and left, he said, Lord, I told you this is what you would do. Therefore, I left and I fled to Tarshish. I got away because I knew what you would do. You see, God is an ever-loving God. I'm glad Romans chapter 8 is in the Bible because it says nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Nothing, not, not death, nor height, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. He said nothing shall be able to separate us. And when Jonah, he knew what God would because he knew who God was. He was God's man. He was God's prophet. He loved God, and he knew what God could do when people begin to give their heart to him. And, folks, I honestly believe that his heart was in the right place. I believe he had renewal. I believe there had been revival in his own life. And then he proclaimed the, the good news, and he proclaimed the message that Jesus saves, that God loved people, and they could return to him. And they did. And they found a personal relationship with God from the king all the way down. Look at verse number uh, 2 as we continue here. Uh, verse number 3, I'm sorry. He says in verse number 3, he says, Therefore now, o Lord, take, I beseech you, my life from me. I don't want to live anymore. For it's better for me to die than to live. Lord, I, I'm, not, I'm not worth it. A dime to you. I'm, I'm discouraged. I'm, I, I, I have had enough of this. I don't want to do this anymore. Have you ever got to that place? There are a lot of folks that live in our world today that just says, I don't want to do this anymore. When Elijah, when Elijah had, had, had fought the, the battle with the, the 450 prophets of Baal, how that God had blessed him and used him in such a tremendous way, and then old Jezebel got after him, guess what, Joe? He decided, Lord, I don't want to live anymore either. I'm tired of this. I can't do this anymore. Folks, here's the thing. We can't do anything without the Lord. But we can't do any more unless we have the Lord on our side. So that's my thought here on this verse is Jonah was so discouraged. He was so beat up. He was so uh, 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 at him, and not, uh, not who he was, should have been, but he was a selfish, self-centered man. 
And he realized that in his own heart, Lord, it's better for me to die than to live. I don't want to live anymore. This is the way it's going to be. Well, God, God's God, and God's going to do what he's going to do. Look at verse number 4. Then said the Lord, do you well be angry? Are, are you trying to, to be angry with me? Or are you doing this for because of me? Why are you angry? He says, uh, the New King James says, Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life. Then he says with the Lord, Is it right for you to be angry? In verse 4, is it right? Do you have the right? It's kind of like how that in the book of, of uh, uh, Job, Job uh, uh, had, didn't do anything wrong, and all the calamity happened. He lost everything, and his three best buddies came and just sat with him, and they poured judgment out upon him, and he shared those things and said, I didn't do anything wrong. Folks, understand that we're sinners, and we fail every day. We, we, we miserably fail God, and my prayer is that we can understand we don't have that right to be mad at God. Because God's going to do what God wants to do. God's going to do what the Lord chooses to do. And we know that God loves us. He cares for us. So let's let God be God. Let's have the mind of Christ and let the mind of Christ filter our lives and use our lives. Look what he says in verse number 5. So Jonah went out of the city. He left the city. He left Nineveh. And uh, uh, he said he sat on the east side of the city. And there he made a booth. Uh, he made a place to live, put up a tent, if you will. He said, and sat under it in the shadow. He said that he might see what would come become of the city. He just want to see what's going to happen. Because you know what he wanted? He wanted those Ninevites to fail. He wanted Ninevites to fail. You know, there's a lot of people that go to church that enjoy it when other people fail. They enjoy it when other people uh, mess up, when other people do something wrong. Because we're all going to do it. But, folks, we ought not to relish in that fact. That's why the Scripture says pray one for another. Pray one for another. Love one another. Care for one another. Minister to one another. Not, not pray that you fail. Not pray that you mess up. You know, when people in our church succeed, I feel like I'm a success. When they do good, I feel like we do good. When the church is on the rise and God's moving and things are happening in people's lives, that's what it's all about. Not me sitting around waiting. I can't wait till you mess up because we're going to mess up. Jonah just sat there on the side, there in his tent, in the shade of the tent. And he decided, well, I, I'm kind of hoping that you will. He said he sat under there and he wanted to see what was going to happen. Verse 6. Verse 6 says, and the Lord prepared a gourd. He said he made it come up over Jonah. And that gourd came up over Jonah and just kind of kind of held the sunshine, sunshine out of his, of his face and on him. And, 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 and remember, his skin was probably been bleached white. So I'm sure he was very sensitive because he'd been in that fish's belly and, and, and I'd say his, 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 his uh, uh, flesh had been bleached just pure white and he was hot and, and different things was going on. And, and the Bible says here, so it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief because he was in pain, I'd say. So Jonah was exceeding glad. The gourd, the gourd popped up out of nowhere. And when it came up the next morning, the sun came and it shielded him from the hot sun verse 7 the bible says but god prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day the next day and smote the gourd and it withered you know i love god's answer look at verse number eight and the bible says it came to pass when the sun arose Job, that God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat the head of jonah and he fainted he just smooth passed out I mean, he was so wore out. And, 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 and again, all Jonah was doing was sitting there waiting on bad things to happen to the Ninevites. And all could happen was God was showing Jonah who was boss. You know, I would think in my own life, after I'd got down uh, and, and rebelled against the Lord, after I really had got to the place in my life that I think, well, hey, you know, what else could happen to me? Well, God had a big old fish. And he had that fish in chapter 2, and it was ready for me. He took me down to the very bottom of the ocean. And I was encaptured in the side of that. And there wasn't no way getting out. I was going to die. And I was in the belly of hell, he said. And that revival came to my life. So, Lord, I'd do it. And I prayed, and God vomited that me out. And I started running, and I was beginning to preach. And I began to preach as a man on a mission. And Jonah had gotten so discouraged, he wanted to die. He said, it's better for me to live than to die. It's better for me. You know, it's the second time he said that. I'd rather die. Verse number nine. Then God said to Jonah, 
do you well be angry for the gourd? Are you mad at the gourd? He said, and he said, I do well to be angry even to death. He said, I'm so mad. Verse 10. He said, then said the Lord, you have had pity on the gourd for which you did not labor, neither did you make it grow, which came up in a night and perished all in a night. He said, you didn't have nothing to do with that, Jonah. You see, guys, that's the thing. We probably don't have a whole lot to do with much anything. All we are is the hands and feet of God. And if it wasn't by his power and it wasn't by his might and it wasn't by his strength, we couldn't do anything. I couldn't raise my leg if it wasn't for the power of God. I couldn't breathe right now if it wasn't for God's power. There's no way that I could do anything if it wasn't for the power of God. So let's think about this one more time. Are you in a state of rebellion? Are you upset because maybe it's not going like you want it to go? Are you upset because this COVID-19 has really got you out of whack and, and got our world out of whack and got people scared and got people afraid? Folks, there's some, some much caution to be assumed here. We've, we've been, it's an unprecedented time in the, in the history of our world. Are you living in open rebellion toward God? You know, Jesus says in John 15, 5, for without me you can do nothing. You can't do anything without God. And I believe that with all of my heart. Jonah was mad at God. He pitched a tent. He wanted to see him fail down there. He said, we we're going to watch the Ninevites fail. That's what he desired to do. He wanted them to do something bad. He wanted something bad to happen to him. He, he didn't want them to be right with God. And then we find the gourd came up, and the gourd came up. They said, well, God sent a worm. The worm ate it, and it withered and died. And he's mad. But look at verse 11. Shouldn't I spare Nineveh, God says, that great city, wherein there's more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern his, left, his right hand between their left hand. And also, there's so many cattle. He says, there's over 60,000 people that don't know what their right hand and their left hand is. 60,000 people. Shouldn't I have pity and mercy upon them? And I have pity and mercy upon you? And you, I, I brought you out of the belly of, of the fish, and I gave you a message to preach. You know, and God leaves Jonah in that situation in a question mark. And I've often wondered, when I've read that time and time again, I've often wondered, Lord, what are you trying to tell us? What are you trying to, why is it open-ended? Why are you telling us something? Because I think what's happening is, is when we get ahead of God, God's already going to be there when we, get, when we try to run ahead of God. You see, I think many of us run, run way ahead of God. We run to God. We run for God. We get away from God. We, we do our best to do everything we can do because we want to help God. Well, folks, God doesn't need us. Do you hear that? All God needs is his people to trust him. All God needs is his people. You see, all this could have been averted. All of this could have been averted. If Jonah, and his name means dove or peace, uh, which stand, dove stands for peace. All this could have been averted if he would have just obeyed God way back when. But you know what? We find that in the Word of God, so many of us don't like to obey. There's a song in the Heavenly Highway hymns I love to sing it. It's number 99. Uh, I, I, I've, I've heard it called the T&O Railway, the only railway that gets to heaven when you trust and obey, when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. What a glory he sheds on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still. When we only trust and obey. Trust and obey because there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. You see, I believe Jonah found that out. He wasn't going to be happy if he was going to have to do it his way. And when he did it his way, he sure wasn't happy. He needed to do it God's way. You see, chapter 3 is, the, is a chapter that we really see a move of God in, in his life, in Jonah's life, and in the life of his people. Now, what breaks my heart is this. This is our cycle that we go. We get right with God. We get uh, something comes along our way and pulls us away from God. Something comes along our way and, and, and helps us, to, to, to entices us, and we sin, and we get further and further away from God. Then something comes along, and, and boy, we get right with God quickly. And then we're back to where we were, square one. 
You know, I don't know that Jonah, if you start the chapter 1, he was in bad shape, spiritually speaking. Well, when I lead, read chapter 4, again, I think the same thing, that old Jonah is still, is still in a mess. He's still in a problem. He's still self-centered. He's still, and we don't find that he ever, we don't meant, and the Scripture doesn't mention Jonah anymore when he talks about his life. I want you to know tonight, I believe with all of my heart that God's got a plan for us. And I really believe all of us can say we've been, we have rebelled against the Lord. I am in rebellion. And we find that we can come to and repent. That means turn from our sin and turn toward the Lord God. And I pray that would be your prayer tonight. I pray that we would learn from Jonah. We would learn from his way and then be able to be instruments used by God to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. That's my prayer. But I want you to know something. So many times we want to renege on God. I don't want to die. God, you didn't call me to preach. God, you didn't call me to, 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 to be a part of the church. Lord, you didn't call me to do this. You didn't call me to do that. Lord, I didn't, you didn't do it. You changed your mind. Well, God doesn't change. Understand that. God doesn't change. So now I, I just want you to know he loves you and he cares about you. And he got a plan for your life. And I'm praying for you as we go forward, as we study the Word of God, as we become that student of the Word of God that God so longs for us to be so that we might learn from men like Jonah who had set up the bar, so to speak, on going away from God. And then God had prepared everything he needed and put him in that fish. And then as he went to that fish, repentance came. When he went to the woodshed, he got a whooping. And the woodshed made a difference in his life. I'm praying tonight, that wherever you are that tonight, Jesus would be lifted up in your life and he would love you. Let's pray. All right, Father, thank you for the word of God. Lord, we find there's so many open-ended questions with Jonah. Uh, we pray that you'd help us to glean from it, to learn from it, and to listen closely to the Word of God. We ask that you'd bless the precious families that are gathered here tonight. We love you. We love them. Thank you for this time of study. We're grateful, Father, for all that you do for us. Give us a good night. Bless us and take care of us. Thank you for Jonah. Thank you for the example that, Lord, you have used him as, and I pray your will be done. Just bless us. Take care of us. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. I love you very much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, everybody, thanks so much for joining us for our discipleship group on the Jonah. Uh, we're going to study another minor prophet. I hadn't made my mind up yet where we're going, so you'll have to turn in for two weeks. Tune in in two weeks, and we'll find out what we're going to do. But we're excited about what God's doing. Thank you so much. Have a great night. God bless you. Take care, and have a great week. Hope to see you Sunday. Uh, parking lot church at First Baptist Church, 10 a.m. Uh, in our parking lot at First Baptist Church on the north side. We love you. We thank you. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye.